Hi, David Ellenstein here, Artistic Director of North Coast Repertory Theater. Thank you for tuning in today to our theater conversations. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. That would help us out a lot. Thank you. Hi, David Ellenstein here, and uh, thanks for joining us for uh, this little series. We're going to do interviews with uh, uh, artists in San Diego and around the country. And uh, it's my pleasure today to be joined by Omri Schein, my friend and collaborator on a new musical murder mystery comedy that we've written together, which we're going to talk to you about in a little while, the remarkable Mr. Holmes. Um, but before we did that, um, most of you have probably seen Omri on our stage or on other stages around the county. Uh, and you probably don't know all that much about him as a person. So before we talked about our show, I thought it would be fun just to talk with Omri a little bit about how he ended up here. Hi, Omri. Hey, David. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, you, you're doing well. You, we're, we're all kind of sequestered in our homes with this uh, current situation. You doing good at home? Yes, um, basically. I mean, every day is a challenge to entertain you know, Pearl, who is almost three and not in school, as so many children are not. And also coming up with you know, uh, new recipes and how to make the food last. Because even though I don't want to go through my dried goods yet, but at the same time, I don't want to go to the store anymore either. So just finding, you know, uh, finding creative ways to use last night's dinner for today Indeed. In, in, new, in new recipes. Right, right. And uh, you, uh, you're there with Pearl and your wife, Elizabeth? Elizabeth, yes. And how long have you been married? Uh, good question. Now, come on, I put you on the spot here. It. Uh, it'll be n nine years in June. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. So where, just, just so people uh, get a little background on you, where were you born and how did you end up in San Diego? Well, okay, so um, I know it's a I know it's quite a, a story. It's a little bit of a story, yes. So I was born in Switzerland. Uh, my mom is Swiss, na uh, Swiss native. My dad is an Israeli native, even though he was born in Poland and he moved to Israel when he was about eight years old. Um, I was born in Switzerland, but uh, the first about ten, eleven years of my life was spent in Johannesburg, South Africa, where my dad did his residency. He's a general surgeon. And then um, once my grandmother unfortunately got sick, um, my dad decided to pack us all up and move to Israel. It was always his um, dream for us, for the three uh, Shine boys to be, you know, Israeli boys. So we moved to Israel. We lived in Haifa for about uh, four years. Um, his dream did not come to fruition. So we basically moved to the United States and we were in Milwaukee first for two years. And then after that, we moved to Staten Island, New York, where I did primarily did my high school and I did my undergrad. And then I decided uh, to go to grad school and I went to uh, San Diego State University um, and I got my MFA in musical theater in 2006, which is, ba you know, my basic, that, that is why I'm connected to San Diego. And while I was in school, that's where I met Elizabeth, my wife, and uh, 2006, I graduated and she moved to New York City with me. But then after maybe eight or nine years, we decided it was time to have a family and we didn't want to do the schlepping of a baby carriage up and down the subway stairs. So we decided to, you know, find a place where we could call home. And we thought about the different possibilities. I wanted, we wanted a city where there was a vibrant theater community and where my, and we also at the same time wanted a family support and where my parents are now, they live in the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin, about an hour and 15 minutes north of Eau Claire, if anybody knows where that is, about two and a half hours away from Minneapolis. So we decided to move to San Diego. So about five years ago, we packed up our things and we drove uh, from New York City here to San Diego and we've been here ever since. And since then we've had Pearl, which was the whole point of coming out here. What was your initial reaction, uh, the initial reason that you got excited about get going into the theater? What turned you on about theater and was it something you knew as a kid or something you came to later? Um, no, it's, it's interesting because um, 
I was, you know, even before my memories, like my grandmother used to tell me that at, you know, parties at gatherings, when I was three years old, I would just leap up onto the table and start singing songs and dancing around on the table. Um, I, you know, I have no memory of this, but I was always, even at, then as a child, I was very into magic and I would buy, you know, magic box set and perform these magic tricks that I learned. You know, this was in kindergarten and first grade. Um, and I was always attracted to certain types of movies. You know, I grew up with movies like, um, you know, Little Shop of Horrors and Annie, um, not, not realizing necessarily that they were based on theatrical plays or musicals. Um, so I've always been theatrical, but I think uh, my aunt, my aunt Sylvia, who is, hasn't been with us for, for quite a while now, this is my dad's uh, sister, um, she, she was the one who took me to plays. I remember when we lived in Israel, she took me to two plays. So that I must have been maybe 11 years old. And uh, one of them was a touring company production of The Mousetrap from England. So it was in English, even though it was in Israel. It was a one night only performance in this huge um, theater in Haifa that definitely influenced me. And then I also saw a production of Amadeus uh, in Hebrew at the Haifa, uh, I don't remember what the name of the theater was, but whatever the main theater in Haifa was. And those two things definitely made me go, ooh, what is this? This is definitely something that I'm interested in. So you've done a number of shows at North Coast Rep, and I'm going to probably leave a few out. I know there was Spelling Bee, uh -huh. Putnam County Spelling Bee, and there was Five Course Love, and there was The Underpants, and there was laughter on the 23rd floor mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to get the funny thing happened on the way of the forum, but what, what did I leave out in the middle there? Uh, the big, the big bang, the big bang, right? Big bang. Was that the first one? That was the first one. Yeah. That was the first one. That's, right. Oh, it's over 10 years ago now. Crazy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Crazy. Time wow. Slow. But then, then we got the funny thing happened on the way to the forum, which I directed and Omri, Omri played the lead in and actually co-directed with me. And, um, we had a big success with that and a ton of fun doing it. And, and as I recall, uh, then we did Holmes and Watson shortly after that, and it was a big success for North Coast Rep. And Omri and I started talking, and we said, big success with Funny Thing Happened on the Way the Forum, crazy musical comedy at North Coast Rep. Our audience loves it. Big success with Holmes and Watson, this kind of mystery drama about Sherlock Holmes. Hey. What did we say? Yeah, you know what? What would you know? What would do better than a Sherlock Holmes musical? Combine the two things, right? Right. So you and I started talking about how this could possibly work, mm -hmm. and, and um, neither one of us are musicians. I mean, you're you're a singer, uh, but neither one of us write music. Mm -hmm. So we needed to get a composer. Absolutely. Yeah. So we we kind of uh, scouted around and we went through a few people. Mm -hmm and ended up with uh, a composer in New York named Daniel Lincoln, who had come recommended to us by a number of people. Mm -hmm. And we started at it. Absolutely. Um, you have experience writing musicals before. How many have you written already? Um, How many musical scripts? I mean, I know you've written some plays as well. I'm trying to think. Uh, musicals, uh, one, two, maybe four completed ones so far. I mean, I've, there's other things, you know, always in the works, but four so far, I think. You just had one produced at a fairly major theater. Yeah, and uh, Westchester Broadway Theater in uh, New York. It's about, you know, uh, by train, it's maybe 45 minutes north of New York City. That, and that was, what, that what was that song. show? It was called uh, Mambo Italiano. It's based on a movie from, I believe, uh, the early 2000s of the same name. It, yeah. What did you learn from doing that, that um, as far as things to do and things not to do, in going forward with you, with the project that we're working on? I think the most important thing, and it's not necessarily only Mambo Italiano, but um, with most experiences I've had, the more you can workshop a show, you keep you know, trying it and trying it and do readings and then workshop it again and then go back to the drawing board and rewrite and then workshop it again. The more times you can do that, I think um, the better uh, the, the turnout will be basically. Right. So where are we at in our process? So, so here we are um, towards the end of March and we're, we're kind of shut down right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what have we done so far and what's next for us? 
Well, so far, well, we wrote a first draft and then we had a, a table read. And for anyone who doesn't know what a table read is, it's basically just a private reading where you get some actors in a room and you sit around a table and you read the script out loud. Um, so we did that in November, I believe, right? It was, I think it was November, right, David? November and, or December, yeah. And um, now we're hoping, well, we'll see what happens. But right now we have um, a workshop scheduled at the end of April, where we'll spend a whole week learning the songs and actually putting it up on its feet, but the actors will still have their script in their hand and, and see you know, what needs to be fixed as we continue the process of putting it up next year. So we, we've been getting together uh, every couple of weeks and going over stuff, and uh, our composer sends us songs from New York to listen to, and he gets feedback from you and I regarding what's working and what's not working. Um, where would you say this, our script is right now? Uh, I mean, we, we, we haven't done our week-long workshop yet. We're going to actually bring actors in for a full week and mm -hmm. work on the script. And that's coming up hopefully at the end of April. But uh, if we need to postpone it, we will. We're not planning on presenting this at North Coast Rep until the summer of 2021. So we have lots of time, as you're saying, to read and workshop and go back to the drawing board and fix things. But where, as far as uh, what we learned from the table read we did and um, where, we at with, where we are at with the music and going forward, le leading us towards this workshop that we're gonna, about to begin, where do you feel like we are ahead of the game? Where do you feel like we still got a lot of work to do? Um, I, think, I think we're ahead of the game, actually. I think we're in much better um, shape than I have been with other projects at this point in the game. Um, I think right now, certain things we can't really know what works or what doesn't work yet, as we haven't really heard a lot of the songs sung by the characters and in context and in order. So I think we'll learn a lot more from that process. But in general, I think we are ahead of the game. So without our giving too much away, um, what... what how would you describe the remarkable Mr. Holmes, uh, our uh, murder mystery musical comedy about Sherlock Holmes, et cetera, to somebody who asked you, well, what is this show? Well, I think it's a homage to the original um, Conan Doyle tales, but at the same time, it's an irreverent, silly take on them, but not too irreverent and silly. It's an interesting style. I think we sort of, I think initially we thought it was going to be more in the Mel Brooks sort of vein, but I think we've come up with our own kind of take, right? D d don't you think? I, I agree. You know, I, I like to say it's a cross between a funny thing happened on the way to the forum and My Fair Lady. My Fair Lady. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because it has some of that elegance to it. Mm -hmm. It has some of the, the, um, the style and classic nature of that My Fair Lady kind of feel. Absolutely. And yet it has some of the silliness, over the top irreverence of Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Absolutely, I agree. So, so for me, it. as we started working on this, I, I remember I, I kept, I probably said this to death, that we had to be accurate with staying truthful to the Conan Doyle style and also our murder mystery had to be uh, believable had to make sense, had to not be so far-fetched that we left the audience in a cartoon land, sure. rather that there was a mystery that they really had to solve. That Absolutely. Was twists and turns that those Sherlock stories are filled with um, and was smart enough so that even the fans of Sherlock Holmes would go, well, this was fun. Exactly. This, was, this challenged my brain enough and I didn't know that was coming. Um, how, how are you feeling like we're doing there? I think, I, I think we're doing fine. I think even if someone were to find out, you know, were to go, okay, I know who the murderer was, they're going to be surprised three or four other ways. Right. No right. matter what. No matter right. what, they're going to have at least one surprise. What, what I loved about the, the uh, Jeffrey Hatcher script we did of Holmes and Watson at North Coast Rep was there were so many twists and turns that, as you say, even if you figured some of them out, there were other ones you didn't figure yeah. out. And I think, so even if I think our show has plenty of those. Th there, is, there are plenty of those. I think we have uh, maybe too many, Omri. Maybe too many. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find that out. Yeah, exactly. Um, which, uh, so right now, I mean, we haven't heard the songs sung by the characters yet. We've only heard, uh, Daniel has made uh, uh, recordings for us with him singing all the characters, which is of great help to get the idea of what the song is, but it's not the same as an actor taking it with, with the character in mind and singing the song. Absolutely. Um, 
Is there a song right now that's standing out in your mind as, as kind of your favorite to this point, or do you not have that yet? Um, I don't think I have that yet. Okay. I mean, I'm like listening to them much more obviously than, than, than you have. Right. A lot of them, I'm realizing a lot of them are catchy. Yes. Even the ones that I'm not necessarily going, I don't know if this will necessarily make it into the show. I'm still finding myself, you know, walking around the kitchen and humming them, even though I don't know if they necessarily will still be in the show a year from now. But right. um, no, I don't think one is a favorite. I think so many of them work within context of the show. So I don't think necessarily, as of now, there isn't a standout for me because I like, I like a lot of them. Right. Yeah. Um. I'm going to, I'm very excited about this, this show. I think it's got um, great potential to be so much fun and such an audience pleasing show uh, in so many different kinds of ways in, in the music, in this, in the plot, in the way we've kind of been structuring the thing to work. I think it can be really a, a uh, full out entertainment in the theater. Um, I, I think so too. Um, now, now that I built it up so much, we we better come through. You better, I know. <laughs> I know. So, um, the workshop is supposed to happen at the end of end of April. If it doesn't, then we'll be postponing that for a while until it's safe for everybody to rehearse in the same room. But we still have our fingers crossed that that may go forward. Even if we end up not doing a public reading with the workshop, we could still all get together and work yeah, on it safely. Absolutely. I think, but we're gonna we're gonna hold off judgment on that. Uh, and then, as I say, it doesn't go into production until the summer of 2021. So we've got a full year after that to um, really refine it and probably do another reading or two of it at some yeah, point. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, we've also, I'm going to say, we've assembled for our workshop. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's going to be available uh, or, or going to end up being in the show, but we've assembled quite an astonishing group of people to, uh, to do this workshop with us. So how, how much, so you've been through this process before on shows. Mm -hmm. How much does the input from the actors, if they're really good actors that come to a workshop, influence the way the, the show goes? Um, it depends. I mean, sometimes an actor will make a choice for the character that you didn't even think of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you write a character and you're like, oh, this is exactly how the character is. I created this character, this character's from my brain. This is how I want the character to be. But then the actor brings something different to you and you're like, oh, wait, that's interesting. That's actually more interesting what I had in my brain. Right. So, you know, so they help, they definitely help develop it, I think. They might take it in a completely different direction than something you were thinking about. Right. Well, this is great. Well, I, I hope we've gotten you interested in um, this upcoming project. And please know, uh, at North Coast Rep, we will try and keep you up to date on what's going on with our situation regarding uh, our being able to put on shows and, and have gatherings at the theater. Uh, we want to be, um, first and foremost, um, health conscious so that uh, there's no chance anybody gets sick at our place. That's the last thing we want. We want people to uh, improve their lives when they come to North Coast Rep and, and not um, put themselves at risk. So we're monitoring the situation. We're going to be back uh, stronger than ever. And uh, I thank Omri for talking with me today and um, hope you enjoyed this. We're going to be doing more of these. Take care.